What's going on guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks within Satisfactory because recently we've been getting a flood and a new wave of new people coming into the live streams asking bits, how did I do this, how did I do that? So I thought I'd throw this video together so I can help you guys here on YouTube and I also can direct them to this video as well. So first up, have you ever been in your factory and you are constantly like wanting to delete these pillars so you're going like this and, and it, oops, you accidentally select something you don't want to? Well, there's a tip for that. So if you go into your options menu, go into your uh, key bindings, scroll down and look for this right here. Toggle specified multi-select dismantle. Assign this something that you can able, you're can you able to use your W, S and D with. Uh, you can press control and use your mouse at the same time. I've got it set to H, which is a key bind on my mouse. And what that does is if I was to just select this, hold control like you would do to mass select, but then also hold the key bind that you've just uh, assigned to the toggle specified multi-select. And what that does, it allows you to highlight only anything that is called small metal pillar. This can work for any other item. So if I highlight the smelter and I was to hold control and the key bind, I can look around. I can basically wiggle the screen around like this. And it's only going to dismantle smelters. Also, a fun little fact, someone asked me yesterday, can you do that with colours? And I didn't know about this, but you can. It's exactly the same way. So you just go into your customizer, you choose the colour you want. Let's go, for example, orange. And we can kind of see the two different colours. This is not the best I can kind of show you right now because it's, it's concrete. But if I hold control and select the key, key bind, it's only going to paint the floor because that's the first thing I selected. So have you ever been in like this section right here? And you're like, oh, I want to paint this floor. So you go into here, you select the color you want. And the next thing you know, you're going around your, your machine just like this and making sure you don't accidentally click your machine. Well, hold the key bind, press it, and then just do that. You can see it highlights them, but it's a quicker way to color your factory. Another tip is how to do this kind of stuff with pillars. You can create different angles. All you need to do is just get yourself a pillar, just build it up like that. And then you can actually attach a pillar to the side of it. But if you hold control, you can actually rotate this. So if you rotate this just like this, and you can actually just attach it onto there and create any form of direction you want. It doesn't have to be that angle. I can even come off here. And you can just kind of play around with this and create some unique designs and any form of things that you want to, you know, make look like you're building support. It. Tip number three is these right here. I had a couple of people yesterday asking about them. Uh, and all it is, it's just signs. So uh, it's literally just a 0 0.5 meter sign, which you just go into here, organizations, square sign like this. And if you've got like your pillars down in the ground like this, uh, all you need to do is just grab your square, aim at it, and it automatically comes up like that. Go inside of it, scroll down, click layout, go to where it just says shenanigans, click this, and then uh, go back to your element settings, remove the text itself, go into here, choose the color you want. So let's just, let's just say bright red. We'll put everything to bright red, just like this, simple enough, quick enough. Select that color, scroll down, and choose emission strength to three. It doesn't really matter about matter gloss, but entirely up to you. Once you've done that, you can come out, you can see that you've got now a red light. It doesn't emit light, but you can see it's a bit of a, an aesthetic feel. The next tip I'm going to show you is how to actually get these into the ground just like this. Because normally a lot of people are trying to go, I'm doing it this way and it's it's way too above the ground. If you, ha if you don't have steel beams yet, you're going to want to go into your architecture uh, and use a road barrier. And if you don't have a road barrier, go into your awesome shop and spend coupons on your... Um, uh, road barrier. I think it's in management. Is it management? No. It's in architecture. Uh, and road barrier is right there. I can't remember how much it costs. I think it's about two, three, three coupons. Just grab yourself a road barrier, place it down, grab yourself a metal pillar, and just aim it at the side of it, just like that. The next cool thing is actually with barriers as well. Barriers, pillars, and steel beams are some cool things you can actually do regarding um, some like clipping, some kind of cool things and kind of shifting some things as well. So what I mean is, is with barriers, you can actually create half, half blocks, you can create quarter blocks and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove uh, some foundations here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a road barrier right here, just like that. 
So, as you can see, it's snapping to the edge of the foundation just like this. But also, you can if you aim at the barrier, you can see that it's snapping to the barrier. If you shift right or left, you can shift your foundation over a little bit more. And if you wanted to, you can create some smaller gaps. So you can just create some small stuff like this. And this could be kind of useful if you wanted to decorate and make some form of, you know, a little gap around here. Like this. And for example, you can even put a small pillar in here just to hide that little gap or, or, or whatever. You know, you can come up with some ideas and you see where we're going with this. Anyway, the other, the other thing you can actually do with these is if you go um, grab a pillar. And here again, this is why I said we get a pillar. Uh, grab yourself a pillar, place it wherever you want to go, and this will actually uh, snap to this. And as you can see, it moves free roam. So I can put this up and down, it moves nice and smooth and not at, a, uh, at an increment. So what you can actually do with this, is if I was to raise this up off the ground, let's, let's, let's say let's put this back a little bit further here, and then I just get the foundation again. Uh, no, sorry, not the foundation, the road barrier. Uh, raise this up a tiny bit like this, and then get the get the foundation, and I aim it like that, and place it, and attach it to that. You can see it's raised up off the ground, but not at a, at a, at a one meter increment. And then what I can do, if I wanted to, I can grab myself a pillar, and I can just keep doing this over and over again. And you're going to see what this is going to kind of do. This is a tip, uh, a trick I found out off Pubcat. Uh, so, and if you notice, look, you start making some stirs. So if you wanted to, you can. You gotta have a little bit of patience to do this, but at least you can. You can run up them, and you can have it going into a building. You can create different heights, so you can just go into here and go like this, and then just create whatever height you want. You know, just attach it and do whatever you want with it. You can create some unique artwork if you wanted to, and but well, obviously with a certain distance, you're not gonna be able to climb up it. The next thing I'm going to show you is regarding uh, how to make a little bit of a cleaner um, minor setup. Because um, a lot of people might have the issue with crooked belts and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to go down and grab some foundation. I'm just going to place this down here. I'm going to place it over the ore. Uh, and a lot of people didn't know you could do this. Is If you've watched, obviously, my first season of Satisfactory, I kind of go over this. Um, so if you just get yourself a miner. And you can actually snap your miner onto a foundation, just like this. Uh, so you can clean things up if you wanted to. You can kind of put a building around it. Uh, and all that stuff. But the next problem is, you're going to bring this out of here, and you can see you're trying to get it into the middle of this foundation, or to the right and create a snapping point. But it's actually very... Uh, it's got a bit of an angle. So how to fix this is... What you're going to do is you're going to just remove the foundation underneath. You're going to grab yourself a barrier. Yes, we're going back to a barrier again. Aim at the front of the miner and hold control. You see how it snaps to it, just like that? And because we've already showed you the snapping points... Yes, you guessed it. You can just connect a barrier like that to there. As you can see now, we've just created a new uh, center point. Uh, and then if you wanted to, just grab yourself a barrier, put it there. Put that into there, attach it. Oh, it didn't attach. But attach that right there. And then you can just remove these two. Remove that bring this in now and if you notice these foundations aren't aligned so you can just remove the previous ones and if you go to put a belt down now it's actually straight this means it will be off the world grid and you will have to uh, figure out how to attach it to your world grid or uh, your grid that your factory is on uh, but yeah this is a cleaner way of just doing up your miners the next tip i want to show you is how to do curves with a very small increment that can actually connect your off-grid stuff to your world grid stuff uh, and how you do that and it makes nice clean turns and there's not very much z fighting there is a way to fix your z fighting and as you know with the pillar method you can actually raise and lower stuff it's a bit of a kerfuffle and it is a bit of a, a bit more work to put into your designs and all that kind of stuff but if, if you want to go that extra mile you know go that extra mile um, so what you want to do is i learned this method from dc1 which was how to do super smooth cur uh, curves uh, so I want to put this into a corner like this. But what you want to do is you want to create the snapping point to that bit. So the center of the foundation wants to connect to that. So that's why we're putting this here. Grab yourself your foundation and place that there. Now you can see this foundation is directly in the middle. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a foundation here. And we're going to turn it by 
5 degrees. Yes, this is 5 degrees. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And you can see that's now 45 degrees. So they are 5 degree increments. So if you just put this back down here and turn this, for example, to the left. If you want to turn left, make sure you put it on this right side. If you want to turn right, put it on this side. All right. Uh, next thing you want to do is grab yourself the walkway crossing again. You're going to put this here. And then you get, grab this foundation. And now we need to bring it back up to the grid. And we put that there. We're going to remove these two. Remove these two. And as you can see now, if we grab that, place it under there. And then remove this top one. We've now started to create a small turn. And the more you do this, the more turn, uh, the more curves you're going to get, and the less Z fighting this actually gives you as well. So there you go. You can see that I've added a couple more, and you can see how the turn is going um, a lot smoother and around the corner. But there is a quicker method, and there is other ways of doing this. You can actually create snapping points with this new scrap, uh, snapping point method as well. Um, but there is another way that a lot of people prefer to use because this can actually take some time if you don't have the patience and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what you want to do is you just want to grab yourself the walkway crossing uh, and then just bring this out like this. Um, so we're just going to place that there. And then if you want, if you hold control uh, at the end of a walkway, you can see it rotates, right? So we can just rotate this by one, by one click again. And then we're going to do this every two, right? So we're going to turn... We'll put zoop on, do two, come to the end. If you just keep hold of control, it'll automatically snap at five degrees. But do two more. Do two more. Do two more. And then just grab yourself your foundation. And where every two is, just aim at it, click it. And what this is going to do, it creates sharper turns. It does create Z fighting uh, problems. And... You can see that's a quicker way of doing turns, and this is going to be going crazy. But you can actually fix Z fighting. If you, if you just go into your customizer, and if you've unlocked the asphalt foundations, just highlight all of this. And as you can see, it actually removes the Z fighting. You have to look really close to actually see it like that. But when you're running around like this, you can't really see it with the asphalt texture. So there you go. That's some tips and tricks. If you want to check out my other content, uh, check out these all around me right here. Uh, check out my second channel if you want to see any of my Twitch VODs and all that kind of stuff. Or even check this stuff over here where you can see like Satisfactory Season 2 or just a game that's recommended you from my channel. So keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.